Support Wrestle Talk! Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I'm Ollie Davis, and today's episode is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends Amania is already running wild over the mobile gaming landscape, so get epic and awesome as it takes you to the world of dark fantasy and realism. Raid is a brand new collection RPG game that already has 10 million downloads worldwide in just six months, an almost perfect score from over 300,000 reviews on the Play Store. And the best part? It's totally free! You can collect over 400 champions from Orcs, the Undead, Knights and more, with my favourite champion being Lord Champfort, because I like to pretend it's Braun Strowman cosplaying as the Mountain from Game of Thrones. I found the game genuinely so addictive, levelling up my team of heroes to play through the fully voiced story campaign, and it's going to grow even more, with some huge updates planned over the next six months, including a new faction, a new clan boss, and fitting with the Braun Strowman fun, a tag team arena for Lord Champfort to completely crush. Run into them all, Lord Braun Champfort! Bury the tag division! So support WrestleTalk and download the game using our special links in the video description below to get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, and Lord Braun Champfort and I will see you there. Hello and welcome to the WrestleTalk MECA NEWS! I am Luke Cohen. Press the thumbs up button, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment down below to answer our question of the day. Do you agree with what Kenny Omega had to say about NXT? We'll be talking about that interview later in the show, along with a top NXT star's response to it, and which NXT star suffered an injury on the show's debut on the USA Network. Click the timestamps down below if you want to jump to any of those news stories. But first, we all had a good chuckle earlier this week when WWE Shop unveiled their latest latest batch of NXT t-shirts ahead of their USA Network debut. We had a chuckle, of course, because they're very, very terrible. I mean, who would put plain text on a plain background? You can buy this t-shirt using the link in the video description down below. But it appears the reason those NXT shirts were so bad, and they are so bad, is because the merchandise department was spending all of their time on Bray Wyatt's new t-shirt. The man who could be our next Universal Champion as he takes on Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell in just a few weeks got a brand new t-shirt yesterday which featured his severed head lantern. But better yet, it glows in the dark! Add to basket. Quantity... Seven. Actually, better make it eight, you know, for special occasions like. WWE clearly have big plans for Bray Wyatt and his new Fiend character, pushing him straight into a Universal Championship feud with Rollins, as well as keeping him off TV in an effort to not overexpose the character. Maybe next year he'll be the cover star for WWE 2K21. But for now, that honor belongs to Roman Reigns and the current Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, who have also been the focal point for a lot of the advertising. But that's not the only partnership these two will be doing. As it was announced, yesterday that WWE have partnered with Paramount Studios for a new animated feature film called Rumble, which is set in a world where monster wrestling is a global sport and monsters are superstar athletes. Winnie, assuming not the poo, seeks to follow in her father's footsteps by coaching a lovable underdog monster into a wrestling champion. The film will also star Will Arnett, Ben Schwartz, Terry Crews and Tony Danza and is set to be released next summer. Speaking of things expected to be released by next summer, and Luke Harper made his shock WWE return this past Sunday at Clash of Champions, helping Eric Rowan defeat Roman Reigns. It had been reported that Harper was set to sit out the rest of his WWE contract after publicly asking for his release earlier this year, citing his unhappiness in the company. This led to some speculation that Harper had signed a new contract with WWE. But unlike Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson and the Canelisai, it's being reported by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that Luke Harper has not signed a new deal with WWE. Of course, that could change, but for now it's still expected that Harper will leave WWE when his contract is up early next year. But Luke Harper wasn't the only person who returned to WWE this week. 
This past Monday, Rusev made his shock return to WWE in a segment with Maria Kanellis beating up her husband Mike. It was an angle that didn't get the best reception from fans, as many felt the Bulgarian brute should be in a much stronger position than being announced as the father of Maria's unborn child and feuding with a joke character. But we can all rest easy, as according to Meltzer, the eventual plan is to reveal who the father of Maria's child is and build to that as a mystery for a ratings boost. But Rusev is not the answer. However, those who are hoping this baby daddy storyline was going to be a super serious one will be disappointed. As Meltzer adds, it was described that this will be more of a running joke than an angle building to a major reveal. Disappointed! Something that isn't a running joke or disappointing, however, is the rating for NXT. Yes, that was a nice segue, thank you for asking. WWE's developmental brand, which features some of the best wrestlers on the entire planet, debuted in its new live weekly slot on USA Network this past Wednesday, with the second hour airing on the WWE Network due to the current season of Suits still airing. It's been reported that WWE were offered the chance to wait until Suits had finished airing, but they wanted to get a two-week lead on All Elite Wrestling before they debut on TNT. But remember, they don't see them as competition. It was good news for NXT though, as the show pulled in over 1 million viewers for its hour on the USA Network, which means they retained 60% of SmackDown Live's audience from Tuesday. The show also did a better number than Suits, and should be a good indication of what USA can expect for this new show going forward. WWE will be hoping for a similar number next week, as they have advertised a rematch between Matt Riddle and Killian Dane for a future shot at Adam Cole, as well as a monster clash between Dominic Dijakovic and Keith. Lee. Someone who might not be on that show, however, is the former North American champion Velveteen Dream. Dream was unsuccessful in defending his title against Roderick Strong, who picked up his first singles belt in NXT, giving Undisputed Era all of the men's gold on the brand, apart from the Cruiserweight Championship, of course, but I guess that one doesn't count. Sadly, it's been reported by WWE themselves that Dream picked up an injury in that match with Strong, with WWE now saying that Dream suffered from lumbar pain and was walking gingerly backstage after the match, adding he's not currently cleared for in-ring competition. Of course, with WWE reporting the injury, it could all just be a storyline and a way to write Dream off TV for a while. But they're gonna want all the talent they have, as in just 12 days time, the Wednesday Night War officially begins when AEW air their weekly TV show on TNT. And as has been expected for quite some time now, seems as though they trademarked the name last year when they were also trademarking names like All Elite Wrestling, AEW TV show will be called Dynamite, with TNT releasing a brand new poster for the show and a trailer which you can watch now. Do you really want to change the world? All eyes are on me, that's fine. It's a drive, it's a hunger, it's a walk. They saw what wrestling was realize what it could be. All Elite Wrestling, A New League Rises, October 2nd on TNT. AEW Dynamite kicks off on October 2nd, and a new match for that show has been announced. It was announced this week that MJF, who turned super heel when he took down Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, you better believe I'm looking for the perfect spell to cast to show how wrong you are, MJF. You better hope you've got good dexterity as my spell slots are way open, pal. We'll be taking on Brandon Cutler on the first episode of AEW Dynamite. That match joins Cody versus Sammy Guevara, Riho versus Nyla Rose to crown the inaugural AEW Women's Champion, and the Elite taking on Le Champion Chris Jericho and two mystery partners who will likely be the former LAX, Ortiz and Santana. And the second episode of Dynamite will kick off a tag team tournament to crown the first ever AEW Tag Team Champions. The brackets for this tournament were revealed on this week's Road to TNT, with first round matches being the Young Bucks vs Private Party, Jurassic Express vs Lucha Bros and SCU vs Best Friends, with Dark Order getting a bye into the second round following their win at All Out. But one of those results might have already been revealed. So if you do want to avoid spoilers for the AEW Tag Team Tournament, skip ahead to the timestamp shown on screen right now for our lead story. We're heading into the spoiler room brawl in 3, 2, 
one. Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio recently that despite being the favourites to win the whole tournament, the Lucha Brothers are currently double booked for the same night the semi-finals are set to take place. So unless that card is subject to change or their semi-final match is moved, we should see the winner of Young Bucks and Private Party take on Jurassic Express for a shot at the finals. Right, so we're all back from the spoiler room brawl, are we? Can't believe two CM Punks are going to win the tag titles. CM Punk to AEW confirmed. But the Wednesday Night War isn't just a war of TV ratings, as it also appears to be a war of words. We've heard jibes from all parties, including Triple H calling AEW a pissant company at the WWE Hall of Fame earlier this year, and now Kenny Omega has stepped up his aggression on NXT in an interview with Sports Kida. Here's what he had to say. And it's weird because, I mean, like, it's hard to say you're going to war with people that I call my friends, and yet we are going to war and yet when i sit back and, and look at the grand picture it's like i'm going to war with these dudes that if we were on the same show together you know the same show in the same promotion let's pretend there were no wars let's pretend there were there were no promotions let's just pretend there's one big promotion if these guys were on the same show as me they'd be in the dark match they'd be in the opening match of my main event match you're gonna call that a war? You're gonna call that competition? Go ahead. I mean, maybe it's fun for you to do. That's cool. But we're, we're in different planets. And you're gonna see that right away when you see 10,000 plus arenas sold out. You're gonna see smiles on fans' faces. And when you're gonna see real stars, not developmental talent, but real stars appearing on your television sets everywhere. Omega's comments are clearly in jest, joking that NXT are often referred to as WWE's developmental brand, despite having talent like Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, and Kushida to name but a few. You know, some of the best wrestlers in the world. And Omega himself confirmed this jest, responding to someone saying he should call himself the best bait machine with a gift that says he knows too much. And Dominic Dijakovic, who will be featured on next week's NXT, got involved with the War of Words posting on Twitter, Hey Kenny Omega, remember when my match with Keith Lee embarrassed yours on the PWG homecoming weekend of Battle of Los Angeles 2017? Tune in this Wednesday to NXT TV on USA at 8pm so two developmental guys can show a real star how it's done again. Which Omega responded to with a laughing gif. Fellow AEW star Joey Janela also jumped in adding, Well, I had the second best match of that weekend, was extremely hungover, no solder burning hammer and got yelled at by William Regal for falling on my head 50 times. 10 hours late with that response, but what's up? No, guys, you're doing it all wrong. You're supposed to talk about food being taken off your table and comparing bank accounts. You're never going to get over with this attitude. Check out the latest episode of Screen Stalker where Ollie Davis and I previewed Rambo Last Blood with this little bit of art. Enjoy. Enjoy.